Hi, this is Dr. Gary. Welcome to my weekly tune-up this week. This week I'm going to talk to all of you about something that's not that pleasant. And the reason I'm going to talk about it is because coincidentally this week a lot of you have talked to me about this subject with great seriousness, despair, and trauma. Sometimes we run in waves on some of the things we talk about here on the tune-ups and today is going to be the day that we're going to talk about addiction. Many of you that I talked to this week are in relationships or in past relationships with people who are highly addicted either to alcohol or heroin or narcotic drugs, even legal drugs. And many of you are addicted yourself and want to get out of it. And yet everyone is asking me one common question. What is it? How do you stop it? Does rehab really work? And how do some people stop and other people can't? And then if you're in a relationship, what do I do? Well, here's one of the things we have to be aware of. And some of you I know have been married multiple times to the same kind of a person, yet thinking you were marrying a different kind of a person. Some of you are that person that thought you changed and went through rehab and you're back again drinking or doing drugs. Addictions are some of the toughest things I work on here with people privately. I work with people around the world with this. Sometimes it's effective, sometimes it's not. I'm no hero. However, what I've found is the thing that makes it the most effective is when the person themselves recognizing they do have a serious issue with it. And they go through either a rehabilitation program or they're thrown into an intervention or they voluntarily check themselves into a rehab center, come out the other side somewhat healed and then go right back to it again. What does that mean? How does that happen? So those of you that are addicted right now, is there anybody out there that really, really knows how to get you off of that? There are people who are really good at helping people get off drugs and stop drinking. But what it really takes is an internal commitment from yourself that come hell or high water, once you make that commitment, you're going to do whatever it takes to remain a non-drinker, a non-smoker, a non-narcotic user, a non-painkiller user, a non-sex addict, love addict, shoplifter, speeder. Because what's really being fed and you're covering up with the addiction is something inside of you. And in the work I do here, what I work with is what's driving that deep down inside. There's a lot of argument and a lot of data, a lot of studies have been done. Well, you just have that addictive gene. Well, you're looking at a guy who has that addictive gene. I'm addicted to everything myself. And what I did was learn how to convert that addiction from one bad thing to something good. And how did I do that? I decided to. I really got leveraged in a very tragic way. And the pain was so great from what I had created, I had to change it. And I was motivated to do so because I was miserable because I didn't. Sometimes that's what drives the healing. Other times what drives the healing is breaking up of a family. And then all of a sudden you are alone and you're addicted and you have no one. Sometimes what drives the healing is just a decision made by yourself on a quiet day, standing out there by the ocean or watching the wind blow or the grass grow or the paint dry, and you just have had enough. And those of you that are married to someone or in relationship with someone who is addicted, and it seems like you're walking on eggshells, you just never know what you're gonna walk into from day to day. What do you do about that? Well, what you have to decide is first of all, ask yourself the question, what is there about me that allows me to be attracted to this? Because truthfully, and some of you aren't going to like this, you're addicted. You have a problem too. And it's a problem of codependency, just like being addicted to drugs. You're addicted to the addiction of somebody who's addicted. You're a rescuer. You're someone who has to know that they will change because you're just that person to do so. But let me tell you a secret. It ain't going to happen. It's going to get worse because, because you're codependent, you're going to be an enabler. 
you're going to do, you're going to bend at the middle, you're going to stretch yourself, you're going to be the rubber band that keeps the relationship together, doing everything possible to keep the family together. And guess what's going to happen? It's going to pop anyway, because one of the true forms of life is you cannot control another person. You can only control yourself. So those of you that are in relationships with people who are addicted, what you have to do is ask yourself this question. What is there about me that has to have everybody else happy before I can be happy and be okay? And usually it lies deep down inside somewhere of feeling abandoned, of being traumatized, either sexually uh, violated or beaten on as a child possibly or have your integrity violated in some way to where you just wanted to please that person so you could be okay and be accepted. The work that you have to do as a person who seems to always get into relationships with people who are codependent and addicted is to understand you're probably codependent and addicted to the addiction itself and the addiction of being in a relationship and having to save someone and having to make people happy to cover up your own pain. What do you do about all this? Sounds great, Gary, so what the hell do we do about it? What we do about it is make a decision each day. And if you're in a marriage with an addicted human being, it's time to have that talk. It's time to really have a talk when they're sober and let them know that you've had enough, that you're gonna draw the line and something's going to change. If you're addicted and you have a rational moment, Realize what you're doing to your family and your kids and the tragedy that you're creating in the future. When you have that rational moment, if you ever have one, recognizing that this is not going to go away until you get some help. And the help you get has to be exclusive to you. Not everyone is cut out for this kind of work to help people like that. I'm very selective on the people I work with and I made a few mistakes in my career end up working with the wrong person and they even turned on me. So I want you to think about what's going on in your life. And I know not everyone has this challenge, but I'm telling you right now, the way the things are in the world, there's more tolerance, there's more this, more that, more, more indulgence than ever before. We're falling into a place in our morals where we are in complete denial of the decay that goes on around us each day. And we allow it in our own life one inch at a time to where we look back to where it used to be to where it is today and it's insanity. If you're in a relationship with someone who is addicted, it's time for you to put your foot down before it's too late, before somebody gets hurt, if they already haven't. If you've got kids and you're in an addicted relationship or even you're out of an addiction relationship, and you're jumping right back into a relationship, what kind of a relationship is that? Have you done your healing work before you got into a new relationship? Think about that. And if you're a person who is drinking too much and anesthetizing yourself with speed, cocaine, or even prescription drugs, making an excuse because you have to have painkillers because you ache all the time, the painkillers are creating a lot of that ache. They break your body down. They break your organs down. They do more harm than they'll ever do good. You have to check yourself into a real rehabilitation center and preferably a medical one and go through a detoxification program and a nutrition-based program where you're getting the right nutrients in your body so your body and immune system can rebuild itself and fight that addiction. And then when you're out, you're still not safe. You have to have outside support, whether you're working with someone like me, you're going to AA or a church group where you have a lot of support. And then you have to disclose your addiction. You have to make it out there to everyone and let them know you have it. Make the world aware that you are changing your life and you want support and ask for it. One of the dangers of addiction is hiding from it and then being denial of it and not mentioning it or admitting it, that is the addiction. I could talk on this for hours. We've only got a few moments here. There's even addictions to money, making money, work. It's not all alcohol and drugs. But what happens is a family gets left behind, feelings and emotions get left behind, and damage is done to the psyche of the ones we love the most. So today, if you know someone that has this challenge, reach out to them and call it to their attention, even though it may cause a problem. 
you owe it to them. Because I can tell you, if they're your friend now, they're not going to be their friend much longer because something's going to happen anyway. Be the one that can make the difference in someone's life. Inspire and motivate someone today to make a change. It's not always comfortable. And I can guarantee you, when we're dealing with these kinds of things, it's not fun. And if you're the one that's in that addicted relationship with someone who is having a problem with this, be strong, stand up for yourself and draw the line and decide you're responsible for your own happiness, not everyone else's. It's not your responsibility to fix someone. It's your responsibility to stay well. You can only love someone if you love yourself first. You can only help someone heal if you're healed. Work on yourself and draw the line and find those distinctions. And then if you have children, you have a double duty to make sure you do this. Think about that. Reach out to someone today if they have this challenge. If you're the one of the challenge, reach out to someone today. Talk about it. Work on it and start changing it. You can, you know. Until next time, this is Dr. Gary asking you to love yourself first. And when someone reaches out and shows you a hand, be willing to take it. And understand that angels are around us everywhere. Angels come to us in some of the most mysterious and strange ways. And sometimes it seems downright inappropriate, and other times it seems like it can't be real. Trust it. If you ask, the help will be there for you. And always remember, when a student is ready to learn, the teacher will appear. Until next time, this is Dr. Gary thanking all of you for being in touch with me. And again, always want to hear your thoughts. Until next time, bye-bye.